everyone, welcome back to Burst TV. My name is Nancy Tran. I'm a registered dental hygienist and Burst Senior Ambassador. Are you someone who experiences hormones or hormonal changes and always wonder why sporadically or randomly your teeth or gums become more sensitive or bleeding? Well, this video is for you. Continue watching and it's gonna help you understand a little bit more about your hormones and your oral health. <music> So whether or not you're a dental professional or a patient that's watching and wanting to have a better understanding of how your hormones and your oral health can be affected, it's just very simple. There's five life stages that you experience this. It's one, puberty, two, when you're um, having your monthly menstrual cycle, three, pregnancy, four, menopause, or five, if you're someone who takes oral contraceptives, also known as birth control. How does this exactly work? So when you have any hormonal changes, particularly through puberty and your monthly menstrual cycle, that increased blood flow actually increases blood flow to your soft tissues, your gums. So that increases bleeding. It's just like vasoconstricting uh, and vasodilating. It's more blood flow to the area, so you have increased bleeding. So even if you're someone who typically brushes and flosses on a regular routine basis, you're gonna notice some level of increased bleeding during these hormonal changes. And that's a sign as a dental professional to be able to recognize these changes in the mouth. If you have a healthy patient that you see all the time and they present with hypersensitive gum bleeding and for the most part, everything is healthy in the mouth, then it could be a sign that they're either experiencing their menstrual cycle or something has changed with their hormones. So I always assess birth control intake um, and then also whether or not they're on their menstrual cycle. So that's very important to be able to identify these factors so that we can properly treat and recommend um, our patients. It has a lot to do with estrogen and progesterone. Those are the female um, hormones that we experience in, uh, in our bodies. So with the increase in estrogen, we get more blood increased blood, uh, more bleeding. And if you have decreased estrogen or progesterone, um, you are at risk for having bone loss issues. And also another fun fact too, is if you're experiencing your hormonal changes and you're going through your monthly menstrual cycle, you are harder to get numb. It's harder for you to get numb. So probably not recommended for you to have a dental appointment that requires anesthesia because it's going to take a lot longer for you to get numb. It's just your body's response to these changes um, affect your oral health drastically. So that increased bleeding in the gums also triggers your body's response to react differently to the bacteria plaque in your mouth. So our body becomes more hypersensitive. It's going to want to um, fight and attack the toxins from the bacteria in the mouth um, as a sign of infection. So these are just different things that we tend to experience. If you're someone who experiencing menopause or premenopause with the reduction of estrogen and progesterone you experience more risk for uh, bone density issues and you have risk for dry mouth because you don't have the saliva someone who's pregnant they are at risk for having pregnancy gingivitis and also pregnancy granulomas which is the the little soft tumors um, on the papillas in the mouth so these are very important things that we want to look for between the five stages of your life changes or if the patient is going through these changes um, puberty technically would be a younger teenage patient and we want to make sure that we're able to educate them on the changes how to identify how to identify is mostly um, what's important to me as a dental professional because we can help them be a part of their um, their oral health journey. They're responsible for it but when you show them what to look for and that it's not just your gums are bleeding. You have to explain to them and try to help understand and get to the bottom of why their gums are bleeding. Sometimes people are just frustrated. Like I do everything that I can, but I'm told that my gums are bleeding. My gums are sw swollen, it's red. You wanna be very understanding and compassionate when it comes to discussing hormones and oral health changes for patients that qualify or fall under these categories. I have noticed a lot with patients who take birth control, um, it's very important to me when we are able to assess uh, oral health histories and medications. Um, typically, someone who starts birth control for the first two to three months are gonna experience the tissue changes in the mouth, increased bleeding because you're getting more blood flow to the tissues, and then things kind of settle and balance out. 
However, if you have a patient that's been taking the same birth control for the longest time and they change um, or are prescribed a new birth control regimen, then they could be at risk for having raw gum tissue. Everything is sore, everything hurts, everything bleeds. Sometimes can even be at risk for having canker sores in the mouth. Um, it's just being able to identify these things. So what do we do when we experience patients who have these in increased oral health issues? Um, one is just being able to educate and help patients identify. Two, recommend the patients come in uh, more frequently for their oral health routines um, and their cleanings, their checkups, um, especially premenopausal, pregnant, and menopausal patients. We wanna be able to see them at least once every three to four months to help assess and treat what they can um, take care of at home. Hopefully this video kind of helps um, us understand a little bit more aside from just identifying patients who have bleeding gums as a gingivitis patient or a patient that does not take care of their teeth. That's not always the case. We are very sensitive, our bodies are very sensitive to hormonal changes. Even the slightest hiccup, you'll notice a difference. So that's why it's important to, to try to get to the bottom of what could be uh, a possibility for increased bleeding, um, hypersensitivity to the plaque buildup and making sure that patients are able to get the care that they need. Hopefully um, this video helps. If you have any questions, drop it down in the comments. If you're someone who experiences these hormonal changes and notices it or you know, this helps make sense to you, feel free to drop it in the comment. I would love to hear more about it. Thank you so much for watching Birth TV.